we'd find most of them just driving around. You would either physically see them or you would actually smell them. It was very hard to swallow. There's another one, there's another one, there's another one. It was very strange. We do a deer census every year. In 2018, when we flew, we saw basically around 217 deer. And then in 19, after the outbreak, we only saw 14 deer on the same amount of property. When we would go to town at night, it was a big deal if you saw a deer. Everybody would talk about it. We're back in the Chinatis, but uh, not looking for Ada, looking for Carmen Mountain Whitetail. Often confused with the Coos deer, but they are a uh, completely different whitetail subspecies. Cool little deer though, saw a bunch of them up there last time I was here. So we'll go up that switchback trail and we're gonna get up on that main mountain and we're gonna be hunting that tallest ridge right there. You can see those trees over the cliffs. That's where I ran into deer last time I was up here. You know, Texas has a lot of layers to it. And the first layer would be our magnificent landscapes. But honestly, underneath each ecosystem, there's way more than what meets the eye. I've been on a journey to learn as much as I can about the major conservation issues we face as a state. Many of the issues our wildlife populations face will take decades to reveal the consequences of our actions or inactions. But recently I heard about one that kills quickly. This year in West Texas, we're facing our worst ever anthrax outbreak. The reports are possibly over 10,000 dead animals. You know, at first glance, you think, oh, somebody poisoned the water hole. You know, is this terrorism? The last time I heard about anthrax was back in the 9-11 days when people were worried about envelopes showing up in the mail. There's a new poison. One ounce can kill all the people in the United States. In event of war, we can be attacked with biological weapons. Biological warfare? What do they expect me to do about it? You know, the fact is, anthrax can naturally occur right here in the soil. And it's not just Texas, but it's popping up in other states as well. But there's a geographically isolated area just barely east of here where it seems to pop up year in and year out. The anthrax triangle is an area of Texas in the western hill country that is known for having anthrax on a yearly basis. Their climate, the rainfall that they tend to get, the soil type in the hot summers is very conducive to the spores surviving. 2019 was a particularly bad year where up to 10,000 or maybe more animals died. First morning back in the Chinatis, what we're hunting is a very isolated species as far as where they live, where they exist. Kind of makes you wonder what would happen to the Carmen deer if something like anthrax were to, to spread into this region. You know, you go a little bit south here, still along the Rio Grande though, you got some ranches that are seeing big die-offs of everything. Coyotes, rabbits, birds, deer. That's a scary thought, especially for something like the Carmen Mountain Whitetail. As far as the public in Texas goes, I feel like anthrax is, is pretty unknown. It's a pretty big deal though. When you start looking at ranchers who are making their living off of livestock, it can be detrimental not only for the wildlife, but the stewards of the land as well. What I wanna know is what exactly is it? Where did it come from? Are there any ways we can prevent these massive outbreaks? 
We try to make our research relevant to the landowners of Texas. That's my primary goal. We did get reports in 2018 of animals dying of anthrax, but it was very low numbers compared to 2019 when there were literally thousands of animals dying. It's been here for years and years, hundreds of years. It kind of takes the perfect storm, they say, for it to happen. You have to have a lot of rain, which we had in the winter and in the spring. Then they say consecutive 100 degree plus days and it causes this to bloom, this spore to bloom. Anthrax is a bacteria that forms these spores that are extremely hardy. Those spores we know can live for over 100 years. When you get a big rain, those spores will actually float up to the surface. Then if that's coupled by a hot, dry summer, those animals are grazing closer to the ground. They're picking up more of those spores. When they get picked up into an animal and the animal ingests them, it's those toxins that ultimately will kill the animal. deer won't bust until you get right up on top of them. It's always like to stop in glass, stop in glass, stop in glass. You look at a water hole and to most people, that represents life. The scary thing is about something like anthrax is what represents life is one of the biggest vectors of death. A lot of these animals contract anthrax through the water and die in the water. So that kind of shows you how quick that dead deer is gonna start infecting others. So for a long time, we've had this stern strain anthrax vaccine and that vaccine is, is very effective. It's relatively short-lived. In other words, if you vaccinate them this year, you're gonna have to vaccinate them again next year. But there's no effective way to vaccinate wild animals. It's cost prohibitive. So we said we need to try to find another solution to vaccinate these animals. These are the microcapsules that we're making for the oral anthrax vaccine we've developed. And we can see that and all the little black dots inside are the stern strain spores that we're using. For the last five years, I've been working on developing an oral anthrax vaccine. And we are a couple weeks away from starting that study up and seeing if we can get that antibody response and protect wildlife from anthrax. Y'all can bring that deer out. Does anyone see my yellow notepad? So this is kind of our shoot system. This is what we'll be working out of over here. Our goal at this point is simply to see, can we give this vaccine orally and get an immune response? Really long time coming and I can't stop shaking. We're gonna have two groups of deer. One group of deer that's gonna get the vaccine to orally. This will dissolve once they swallow it and then release the vaccine into their digestive tract. There you go. Put the head back. There we go, that's good. Far back there, perfect. That's a good one. Let's hope it works. The other group of deer is the group that we're going to be giving the regular vaccine in injected the way you would normally do, say, for livestock. He's done. We want to be able to compare those two groups. All right, guys, that's the last deer. Successful job today. Hey, there's a doe on that bridge straight across from us. She's just silhouetted up there. He's super alert. Yeah. Rock 
box crumbling over there. She's looking that way, dude. Buck right there, dude. When she clears it, I'm gonna shoot. Okay, here he comes. Hey, he's coming right behind us. He's coming right behind us. Did I go high, dude, or what? You're still standing there. Oh my gosh, dude. Everything we hoped it would look like is kind of what it looked like just there. Let's hit the horns together in a cool area and get to watch the rut and kill a big buck. <laughs> Think about a subspecies that is isolated to a specific region because this is a true native species. These deer have been here as long as most of the usual hawks have. And uh, something like anthrax comes through here and wipes out the herd, that's it. Oh, oh my God. Dude, I am literally in shock. Look at this flyer. Yeah, we wanted to kill an old one and I think we killed the perfect deer. Really makes you appreciate them because who knows the future? Shows you how valuable research is. Kind of help you come up with the best plan on how to secure the future for, for these little Carmen deer. Wildlife has a couple of different values. Certainly there's an economic value for a landowner who relies on hunters or tourists. So there's a big economic impact of, of wildlife in the state of Texas. But there's also this environmental and conservation impact. I think we should be putting more resources towards anthrax research. It's a huge economic issue for the state of Texas. Now, there's no guarantees that in five years we don't have this again or three years. There's no, nobody knows when it'll happen, how bad it'll be. We're hoping in this area that there will be more studies done and they will develop something to help us down here. There's many things that we don't know yet, and we're hoping more research can get us there and help us figure it out and find a solution for it. Well-funded research is the most important part of conservation. When these anthrax outbreaks occur, it requires landowner participation. With good data and good communication, we can control these outbreaks when they show up at our doorstep. Yeah, I really am so grateful for the dedicated researchers who bear the burden of wildlife stewardship. And it's those people who preserve our opportunity to enjoy these wide open spaces.